Before we talk about the area between curves, let's first understand how we find the area under a single curve. Imagine you have a wavy line drawn on a graph. This curve represents a function, which means it gives a value for y when you plug in a value for x, and we denote it as f of x. For example, if f of x is x squared plus 2, then when x is 1, f of 1 is 1 squared plus 2, which is 3. When x is 2, f of 2 is 2 squared plus 2, which is 6. You get the point. Now let's say we want to find the area of this blue shaded region, which is the space under this curve, between two points on the x-axis, like from x equals a to x equals b. We can't just measure it directly because the curve is not a straight line. So we use integration, where we break this shaded region into super-duper tiny or infinitesimal vertical slices, then add up their areas and get the total area of this shaded region. Now consider this single slice out of all of these slices is located at point x, y, or x, f of x. So this will be equal to x, and this will be equal to y or f of x, right? Now if I denote this tiny width by a variable dx, which basically shows a very small change in the value of x, then what will be the area of this rectangle? It will be width times this height, isn't it? Or it will be f of x times dx. So if we add up the areas of all such small rectangles, we get the summation of f of x times dx, where x goes from a to b, right? This will give us the area of this curve f of x between a and b. But when dx is super duper small, like it is not zero, but very close to zero, or we say it approaches zero, then we simply change this summation sign with the s looking sign, which we call as integral. And when we put the bounds here, like x equals a to b, then we call it definite integral. So the area of this curve is given by this definite integral from a to b of f of x times dx. Now imagine I have another curve like this, and we denote it as g of x. The area under this curve between the same points a and b, or this red shaded region, will be given by this definite integral from a to b of g of x times dx, right? Now suppose I plot both f of x and g of x on the same graph. Then, what do you think will be the area of this blue shaded region? which is the area between the curves f of x and g of x. Yes, you are right. It will be equal to this area, or the area of the curve under f of x, which is given by this definite integral minus this area, or the area of the curve under g of x, which is given by this definite integral. Now, because both of them have same bounds, so we can club both of them together to get the area of this shaded region, or the area between f of x and g of x is equal to integral from a to b, f of x minus g of x, and that's it. So, to find the area between two curves, we take the integral of the top function minus the bottom function. Let us now look at a few examples. Let's say we have two curves, y equals x and y equals x squared and we want to find the area between them from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Before we jump into calculations, we need to carefully decide which function is on the top and which one is on the bottom. For small values of x between 0 and 1, x squared is always smaller than x. This happens because when we multiply a small number by itself, it becomes even smaller. For example, if x is one-half, then x squared is one-fourth, which is clearly smaller than one-half. Since x squared is always less than x in this range, x is the top function, and x squared is the bottom function. Now, to find the area, we subtract the bottom function from the top function. This means we take x minus x squared, and we integrate this expression from x equals zero to x equals 1. For any power of x, 
The general formula for integration is simple. If we have x to the n, its integral is x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. The integral of x will thus be equal to x squared divided by 2, and the integral of x squared will be x cubed divided by 3. Now, we evaluate this expression at x equals 1. When we plug in 1, we get 1 squared divided by 2, which is 1 half, minus 1 cubed divided by 3, which is 1 third. This simplifies to 1 half minus 1 third, which is 1 sixth. Next, we evaluate the expression at x equals 0. Since both terms contain x, plugging in 0 gives 0. Now, we subtract the value at x equals 0 from the value at x equals 1, which is just 1 sixth minus 0. This means the final area between the curves from x equals 0 to x equals 1 is 1 sixth. Now, let us find the area of the region bounded by the curves y equals x squared and x equals y squared. Just like before, the first step is to figure out which function is on the top and which one is on the bottom. But here, something is different. The second equation is written in terms of x instead of y. This means the curves are not given in the usual form where y is a function of x. So, we have to think carefully about how they look. To understand the shapes, let's rewrite x equals y squared in the standard form by solving for y. Taking the square root on both sides, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of x. This means there are two curves, one for the positive square root, which is the upper branch, and one for the negative square root, which is the lower branch. However, we are only interested in the region bounded by both curves. If we look at the negative square root, there is no enclosed region between y equals x squared and y equals minus the square root of x. They do not form a closed area together. Since we are only finding the bounded region, we only consider y equals the square root of x. Now, let's find the points where these two curves meet. We set y equals x squared equal to y equals the square root of x. This gives us the equation x squared equals the square root of x. Squaring both sides, we get x to the power 4 equals x. Rearranging, we get x to the power 4 minus x equals 0, which factors as x times x cubed minus 1 equals 0. This means x equals 0 or x cubed equals 1. Solving for x, we get x equals 1. So the curves meet at x equals 0 and x equals 1. To find the area, we subtract the bottom function from the top function, which gives the square root of x minus x squared. Now, we integrate this expression from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Using the general formula, the square root of x is the same as x to the power 1 half, so its integral is x to the power 3 halves divided by 3 halves, which simplifies to 2 thirds times x to the power 3 halves. The integral of x squared is x cubed divided by 3. Now we evaluate these at x equals 1. The first term becomes 2 thirds times 1 to the power 3 halves, which is just 2 thirds. The second term is 1 cubed divided by 3, which is 1 third. Subtracting, we get 2 thirds minus 1 third equals 1 third. Next, we evaluate at x equals 0. Both terms contain x, so plugging in 0 gives 0. Now, we subtract the result at x equals 0 from the result at x equals 1, which is just 1 third minus 0. So, the final area of the region bounded by the curves y equals x squared and x equals y squared is one third. Now it is not necessary that we will be given y in terms of x. We can also be given a function as x in terms of y, like we just saw in the previous example. So 
Suppose we are given a function x equals f of y like this and x equals g of y like this. Then the area between them from points a to b will be given as integral from a to b of f of y minus g of y times dy or integral of right function minus left function. For example, let us calculate the area of the region bounded by the curves x equals 4 minus y squared and x equals y squared minus 4. This is the plot of x equals 4 minus y squared, and this is the plot of x equals y squared minus 4. To find the area of the shaded region, we first determine where the two curves intersect by equating both of them. This gives us the equation 4 minus y squared equals y squared minus 4. Move this 4 here and this y squared here to get 4 plus 4 equals y squared plus y squared, which simplifies to 8 equals 2 times y squared. Dividing both sides by 2, we find y squared equals 4. Taking the square root, we get y equals plus or minus 2. So, the two curves meet at y equals minus 2 and y equals plus 2, which will be our limits of integration. We see that x equals 4 minus y squared is the right function, and x equals y squared minus 4 is the left function. Using the formula for area when integrating with respect to y, we set up the integral as the integral from y equals minus 2 to y equals plus 2 of right function minus left function. Substituting the functions, we get the integral from minus 2 to plus 2 of 4 minus y squared minus y squared minus 4. Now, we simplify the expression inside the integral. Expanding the terms, we get 4 minus y squared minus y squared plus 4. Combining like terms, we get 8 minus 2 times y squared. Using the general rule of integration, this will become 8y minus 2 times y cube over 3. First evaluate this at y equals 2 to get this, which will be 32 over 3. Next, we evaluate this at y equals minus 2 to get this, which will be minus 32 over 3. So, this minus this will be equal to 64 over 3. And that's it. That was noise. Next, you need to solve this question and let me know your answer in the comments. If this video gets 10,000 likes, then I will make another banger calculus video like this one. If you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, consider becoming a Patreon, as it helps me create more awesome content for you. Link is in the description. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.